Hi, and welcome back to this, the 21st episode of my slightly over-the-top uh, overhaul retrofit modification of this old Sieg 7x12 mini lathe. If you are just joining the series, thanks very much for joining, and I'll put a link up here show to all of the earlier episodes. Last week I'd finished with the enclosure, and this week I'm going to move on to populating these control cabinets. But first, I need to address something from episode 20. This channel's number one fan had asked me that I help you visualize how smooth the saddle moves. Nico was not happy with my description. It's actually like this. Oh yeah. I think once you get to this part of the build, it'd be quite easy to fall into a kind of an analysis paralysis trap because everything you do, every decision you make affects everything else in the build. You know, do I put the, the computer here but then I'm going to need power to come up from this connection through here up through this way or do I put it down into the other one Then, but then I need to send signal lines through into the other cabinet. Electrical engineers who do this sort of thing for a living probably are laughing and going well how hard could it be just follow the, the the accepted guidelines but you know I'm not an electrical engineer or a cabinet designer I'm just playing one on the internet this week so I guess I'll do my best um, it's probably best just to make some decisions go for it and if some of them are bad decisions live with it most of the stuff won't be too difficult to mount it'll just be a few screw holes through the back plates some screws coming up and if I get them in the wrong place I can just drill extra holes and move them around. The stepper drivers with their backplane rack mounting system is going to be the most complicated thing to mount so I'll do that first. So the first decision is do I make up a new frame from scratch out of some angles and pieces of aluminium to mount this make a sort of a cage or option B would be butchering this lovely old 19-inch uh, instrument case because I know it's got all the holes in the right location. I mean, I'd end up chopping the whole thing to pieces and only using probably 25% of it, but that may still be the better option for two reasons. One, I know everything will fit because that's what it came out of. And the other thing is it's too nice for me to throw away, but I've had, a, had two of them for 17 years and I never used the second one. So the probability of this sitting around in my basement taking up a whole bunch of space and never ever being used is pretty high. So it seems like I'll probably butcher this. All I'd be looking at reusing would be like I guess rails to here, cutting off this part, the sides here on each side, and just using these pieces. I guess this thing's like a Meccano set for electricians who wanted to be mechanics. I've just clamped a heavy chunk of steel down onto the bed of the dual as a kind of a fence, just so I get all of these the same length. Well, that worked well. They're all nice and even in length. I 
I hate to think what this rack cost new because it's all exceptionally high quality extrusions and this is even a tiny little T-nut profile could make like a million tiny little T-nuts except I don't need any Now that the cage is built, I've put in these guide rails, they just clip in. The backplane adapter is currently loose, so I'll push these um, drivers in and use them to locate the backplane. And once I've got it in place, then I can drill some holes to mount it. This was the first circuit board I ever made. Just used the uh, toner transfer process and etched it. Came out quite well. I think there's one little trace that got damaged down here that I had to bridge, but otherwise it seems fine. I didn't put any sort of uh, anti-corrosion paint or anything on it, so it is getting a little tarnished, but oh well. It's lasted this long. It was obviously installed in a slightly different alignment last time because the uh, screw holes don't line up quite properly. <laughs> This is the standard stud which uh, Rittle provides with the, the hardware which they give you to space the mounting plate forward 18 millimeters off the back. Since I need to gain a few millimeters there, um, what I was thinking was just making up some, some spaces like washers to maybe move this, this sheet forward five millimeters and then just mount the back plane with with, bolt, with bolts and that will gain me my my clearance at the front for the cage and the stepper drivers but still give me enough space for screw heads or nuts behind this board. Now I'm just going to offer it up to make sure I do actually have clearance with the door so that's going to sit oh that's good yeah, that's got plenty of space. Now let's make those spaces for the lower cabinet. So now the cage is made, I'm just laying out 
where these things go on this back plate and marking the mounting locations. This will be screwed from the back, as will the PC. It's got uh, two screw holes, just little M3 holes. I've already marked those out. They'll be drilled and mounted from the back. Now, next thing I'm going to need this piece of cable channel, which will run up the middle. So I need to cut that. Well that finalizes the layout for the upper control cabinet. Uh, next up I'm going to need to go through and drill all of the mounting holes, some of which will be threaded, some will have some screws coming up from the back like for this cage. And the other thing I need to do is cut into the side of the cage because I need access to some con connectors that are in there. And I think the easiest way is just cut windows in it and let the access that way, go to get the access that way. I think the easiest thing is just to cut windows and gain access that way. One of the really nice things about using these control cabinets with these removable back plates is you can mount everything and get a lot of the wiring done in advance before you actually uh, put it on the machine. Obviously if I'd used one control cabinet full size rather than two I could have also put all the power supply equipment there and connected and wired all that stuff up as well. But even this should make a fair bit of that fiddly work of wiring easier because I'll be able to do it directly here on the, on the bench rather than sort of stuck up inside the machine. And this is my detailed plan for drilling all the holes. Now I could set up the mahu and accurately drill these hole patterns, but I really can't be bothered. So all I'm going to do is uh, bolt down the board and then transfer punch another corner, bolt it down again and transfer punch the, the other four holes, which should hopefully res result in accurate holes. Well, it turns out Rittle already put a, a number of holes into this board, and unfortunately, I found one of them. It was right beside where I needed the hole, so the drill followed the existing hole. Now I've measured and I do have a little bit of clearance between the back of the back plane board or its pins and this surface and I will also pack it up with, uh, with washers but just to make sure I don't cause a short I'll also cover this area with electrical tape. Next up I'll mount the computer. Uh, it mounts with two M3 screws on the back. By the way, it's a, someone asked me, it's a Gigabyte G-Base 3150. There are USB ports on this side. The bottom's got a VGA port which I won't be using and audio ports which I won't need. 
and then this side's got power in, video out, um, Ethernet, and more USB ports. So I'll put this this side with the most ports towards the cable canal, and if I need the extra USB ports, I'll just have to run the cables up this way. Next up, the cable channels. Have a bit of adhesive on the back. And now we'll do the standoffs. These mount the small boards. While I drilled four holes to mount this, that really is total overkill for such a tiny board, so I'm just going to mount, mount it with two of the standoffs. That'll be fine. say, getting that first cabinet populated feels like quite a major step forward in this project. Now I don't want anyone to think this is the right way or a good way to do this. Really this is all a bit too tight. Ideally you'd want at least a sort of two, three centimeters between the connections and the cable channels. It's just unfortunate that this is the size of cabinet that I could find, so gotta just live with it. There are two, two wall warts I need to integrate into this, one for the monitor and one to power the PC. So I was kind of thinking of doing something like make up a 3D printed um, DIN rail adapter to mount them down in this sort of area. Yeah, I haven't really, haven't really finalized that as part of the design yet. It was unfortunately not possible to align the vertical cable channel between the two cabinets, but it doesn't really matter. I'll just take off these three fingers here and the wires can take, make that dog leg. That's not an issue. So the next thing will be to mark this out on the cabinet and cut through between the two cabinets. going to enlarge this existing hole in the cabinet to take the cold connector for the power in. 
This is also something I've saved from some other machine. It's already nicely, uh, nicely protected and heat shrunk and everything, so I'll just reuse it. I need to cut through between the upper control cabinet and the actual lathe itself and I need space for spindle motor cable that's the three-phase cable it's quite thick that's this one uh, I need two stepper two stepper cables that's uh, that's these ones here, two of them. Then there's the encoder cable. I'll have a cable for the keyboard. There'll be Power supply for the monitor. Oops. Somewhere in there, I need a HDMI cable, HDMI. Finally, the seventh cable is a USB cable for the monitor's touch function. Now, while this area is probably going to end up all enclosed, one of the issues you have is that when turning, you quite often get swarf go down the center of the, the spindle. So even if I put something here to, to sort of direct that swarf out and dump it overboard, I'm still going to need to expect swarf falling into this area of, at some level. My original plan was to put gland nuts in this position so that I could seal each individual cable like one th one thick one for this uh, main motor cable and then the smaller ones for all of the others but I, that was before I counted the total number of seven and realized that I definitely can't get an HDMI cable through a gland nut I probably well, I could get, could get that one through but then it probably won't seal it probably doesn't clamp clip small enough so I think I'll change and just go to a single larger hole, put all of them through and then maybe seal them with potting compound or make some sort of a external clamp to seal them here. So that's going to be the whole stack up of cables that'll come through here and it's really not that much space needed. I might be able to get it done with about maybe a 22 or 24 millimeter hole I guess. I enlarged this uh, existing hole on the back of the cabinet because this is where the main on off switch is going to mount through here. It's just a standard industrial switch with uh, removable and replaceable switch gear.
Well, with all the drilling done and the cutouts finished and the cabinets reinstalled, that completes the hardware installation and the population of these boards. I'm gonna stop here and start uh, editing to upload a video for you guys. If you like what you see, I appreciate a like, subscribe, please recommend it to somebody. Until next week, thanks a lot for watching.